the statistics are staggering because annually, globally, we generate around 18 billion tons of waste. And that, if that wasn't staggering enough, is set to double by 2050. How do we deal with this problem? Because a lot of this waste is being disposed of illegally, number one, and of course that leads into uh, ocean leaks and water leaks. We need to be more responsible, we need to be more sustainable. There are great challenges, but there are also great opportunities when it comes to bolstering the blue economy and protecting the biggest ecosystem in the world, of course, our oceans. So without further ado, my distinguished panel have all the answers, I'm sure, so let's hear more from them. Let me introduce you to them. Uh, to my left, Patricia Ricard. She is the chair of the Paul Ricard Oceanographic Institute. Bienvenue, it's lovely Merci. to see you. Merci and next we have um, His Excellency um, Major Ali al Suedi, the president of Emirates Marine Environmental Group. It's lovely to see you. Thank you. And completing the esteemed lineup, we have His Excellency Khalid al Huramel. He is the group CEO and vice chairman of BR Group. Nice to see you too. Thank you. Um, let me start by asking you, Patricia, where do we stand globally? How bad is the situation? Give me hope, there is light at the end of the tunnel, but what role does science play in all of this? Well, the science plays a role that <coughs> pays attention and gives you facts. Science doesn't give you solutions, science gives you facts. And it is true that our, I've been in, in that field for a long time and the hope came because the awareness raised and we are, uh, we've shifted from uh, uh, um, talking about pollution and now we're getting into the solution solving. And there are ways, there are ways to solve solution. One is, um, a few moments ago, uh, Ashok was talking about governance. Uh, I've seen for a long time a project that works, what I call the magic square, where you have academics, economics, institutional and NGOs working together, it's extremely efficient because we need to have the science and at, at, the, at the middle of the, of the project, of, of the solution, but we need the economy because if your solution doesn't get its way on economy, doesn't become sustainable and on, on, on profitable, it will not change the world. And then you need to have NGOs and, and medias and because you need to uh, shift the, um, the human mindset. I mean, we really have to, mm. to do a little shift on that. And then you need institution and, and government to, to, to apply to, to make the regulation. So the, the, I would say the hope remains in doing Doing it, doing it together by that magic square and then uh, doing it together financially too with private, public and philanthropic. Philanthropy is going to be key because a lot, of, a lot of things in the ocean are not uh, ROE. I mean, you can, you, can, you can make blue economy with shipping and ports, but how do you pay for conservancy, mm -hmm. for, for, for a um, science study, for a, a saving species? So it's, um, it's an invitation of playing together using everyone's talents, everyone's expertise, and really joining around the ocean. Because the ocean is probably, well, the day everybody will take care about the ocean, even the, the country that have no borders with the ocean, no coastal zone, we will be safer because whatever we do on Earth has an impact on the ocean. And, and we need to keep those ocean alive so we can keep the, the um, this, this biosphere uh, balance. So I think the ocean, we, we, we will not have a second planet, but uh, taking care about the ocean will definitely be our best chance. Just backstage, you were telling us a joke, if not a, a slightly uh, thought-provoking one, um, about how we should take the responsibility of waste, not least with our oceans, yeah, more seriously. We, you know, uh, sometimes when I talk to the children, I said, uh, you know, the ocean is a, mi a mirror, a mirror with memory. And when you, want to be, when you want to do something right in the mirror, you have to do it reverse. So imagine we reverse on a very, very funny way our state of mind. Have you ever heard someone coming back from a polluted country and said, oh my God, the beach was so dirty, it was full of one dollar bill? No. <laughs> waste are all around the world because today waste have no price. I can tell you that if waste had a regular and dignified price, people will just take it. Absolutely. So we, just, we need to use our economy and our finance to foster the new world 
and change your mind. Changing the mindset, that, that comes first, then changing behaviours, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, Your Excellency, Major Swedi, if I can ask you, tell me a little bit more about the work that is being done at the Emirates Marine Environmental Group, and uh, as Patricia was saying, the role of community and action being so important. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm really happy, you know, uh, to come and uh, speak here about what we are doing in uh, in Emirates Marine Environment Group. And first, you know, thank you very much for the Ministry of Climate Change. And uh, it's really uh, uh, something really nice to focus on pollution and what's happening. Uh, if you want to know about uh, uh, MEG, you know, uh, I born on the beach, close to the beach, you know, three meters, and they throw mine in the sea. And that's our traditional, you will be always to the sea. And that's happened, you know, from my own being, uh, because my family is a built family, and we start, you know, uh, as a route, you know, going to the sea. Uh, you know, when I came, like, 16, I met uh, Cousteau, the French guy, who uh, really changed my life, because I met him at Ras Mohammed, and, you know, before I take care about the uh, culture and, you know, some environment. Uh, and I start many organizations, especially when he told me uh, Al Wasal Journey, uh, also uh, Emirates Diving Association. Uh, after the Gulf War, because I'm major also in the Navy, I joined the Gulf War, especially the second one, pollution everywhere, and I start MEG. Uh, when we start, you know, MEG, we start, you know, to clean the harbors, because the harbors have too much rubbish and we have to clean, like, more than uh, 40 tons a day is a huge thing because people they think you know this is a garbage and they are throwing in the harbor so we start from Fujairah, Dubai, Sharjah, Abu Dhabi, uh, Delma Island and this is all with the Ministry of Climate Change because it's one of the amazing thing you know to see all the organization and the government in Dubai how uh, to take care about the environment and the education program you know we have with Dubai Municipality in uh, the Jabal Ali Reserve. We done a big uh, uh, education program for the kids. They can come and clean the beach, planting mangrove, and thinking about the environment because we believe they are uh, our future. We must take care about them. Also, always we told them, you know, how to love the nature, to take care about the nature. You know, in MEG, in the reserve, is not allowed anybody shouting. When you make mistake, we say we love you. That, that's very something really nice, you know. When you say a nice word, and this is how we teach these children, you know, to uh, like each other. Don't say I'm foreign. Everybody is is we coming from one mother, one father. We have same blood. That means we are brother and sister. And this is something really nice going. You know, we have the English Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, the American, Finnish, <coughs> and it's very good communication. Uh, also, if we speak about our sea, you know, our sea is very, uh, very clean for sure. And we have some problem, and this is how we uh, settle this problem, uh, especially with the boat, because they are throwing, you know, many rubbish in the sea. And when we have rough sea, always our beach uh, full of uh, rubbish, just we take this plastic and we do a recycle. And one of the amazing things really happen, uh, you know, to see all this communication and the planting mangrove is very important for us. When I came to the place, it's very small number. Mashallah, we have about nearly two million now, mm -hmm. and we are going to complete more. Also, uh, I am planting uh, reefs in Abu Dhabi, in uh, Hawk Island, which is close to Sir uh, is the, with Abu Dhabi environment. It's about uh, 800,000, the biggest in the world. This is how our government, our ministry, and our sheikh, you know, direct us to do more about the environment, more about how to take care of the, <coughs> the children, and uh, to make the future, you know, is much better than wh what's happening. Also, something really nice, you know, when you do a conference like this, and many people come from all over the world and put their experience. This is amazing, you know. From my experience, really, you know, I have Many people come to Dubai, to Emirates, and they come with their experience. For me, it's like a treasure. 
when you put this in our country and make our country is the best for me in the world, this is something really, you know, uh, uh, very happy to see people come and help the country. Thank, Thank you. you. It's inspiring. Um, Your Excellency Hala, let me come to you. I first came to Bia in Sharjah about six years ago with my camera crew, and we filmed a show there for a couple of days. You were very accommodating. It was huge then. I imagine it's even bigger now, and you have global ambitions. Tell me about the size and scope of the business, where it currently stands, and how it relates to saving our oceans. Uh, first of all, assalamu alaikum. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, well, uh, maybe to answer the second question, you know, the most effective way uh, to prevent uh, waste from reaching uh, oceans uh, is for us is to build the infrastructure to treat the waste, to divert the waste. And this is what BIA as a group uh, has been doing for the last uh, 16 years. Uh, here in the UAE, a lot of investment has been put in building the infrastructure to treat and divert waste away from landfill, uh, away from other environmental bodies, away from the ocean. And uh, what we've been able to do successfully in the Emirate of Sharjah uh, to date, we've diverted uh, approximately 93% of the waste away from landfill, which is uh, one of the uh, highest uh, diversion rates in the world. Uh, and uh, that's been done again over 15 years uh, or 16 years by building the infrastructure. Uh, so building material recovery facility, recycling facilities, uh, waste to energy facilities, uh, construction and demolition waste recycling facilities. Of course, it also involves a lot of awareness, education at the schools. We did a lot of that over the years. Uh, and, uh, and today we op operate across all of the UAE. We are also present in Saudi uh, and in Egypt. Uh, so this is what I would say is the, the challenge uh, facing many regions is that they do not have uh, or they've not put the investment in the waste diversion uh, and infrastructure to treat that waste. Mm -hmm. I imagine that technology is pivotal to getting us where we need to be, also to helping you scale and PPPs will help take your model globally um, to global success. Talk to me about what you're most excited about when it comes to technology. How will it have moved on this time next sure. year at the next World Government Summit? Uh, uh, before I talk about technology, you mentioned PPPs. Mm. And I think one of uh, the reasons for our success is having a PPP model. BIA was uh, formed as a public-private public -private partnership. And we feel it's important between the government and private sector to work together to tackle environmental and uh, waste management uh, challenges. So uh, in Saudi, we also have a PPP in the holy city of Medina. Uh, in Egypt, we also have a PPP with the government and the new admin capital. And, uh, and that's allowed us to achieve targets quicker. Uh, and uh, we've been, I believe we've been good at using technology in treating and managing waste. Uh, so, for example, our fleet, we use AI to track our routing. Some of our facilities use AI and AI vision to segregate waste. Uh, so we invest a lot in, in technology. And uh, when I move on to uh, partnerships, we've done a partnership um, for marine waste uh, treatment, waste treatment. Uh, and uh, we use also uh, satellite monitoring when we're looking at uh, waste streams in the oceans. Uh, and we've treated some, some uh, uh, major, uh, let's say, hazards. Uh, for example, there was uh, a big vessel uh, in the Arabian Gulf uh, recently that uh, was on fire. Uh, that vessel is a very large vessel, 12,000 containers. Uh, so uh, we worked closely with, uh, with that vessel uh, and uh, where we were able to transport all that waste we were able to treat all that waste, convert it to alternative fuel, to fuel uh, uh, cement plants, and treat it 100%. Uh, so, so these are examples of what we've been doing with, with the technology. It's impressive stuff. Patricia, we know the three Ps. You believe there's a fourth, philanthropy. Yeah, Tell yeah me there's more. a fourth, philanthropy, because philanthropy, um, philanthropy needs to be on a long way, on a long run. 
Um, philanthropy gives more than money. Mm -hmm. Philanthropy gives time, gives enthusiasm, gives network, gives emotional support. And philanthropy mostly helps also the scientists mm -hmm. because programs, uh, public and private programs, will build the program. But somehow, sometimes, you need to also follow the scientists' enthusiasts. And philanthropy also gets education. Yeah. Uh, in a family, philanthropy gives value, uh, gives a vision, gives a sense of responsibility. And I think that philanthropy it's a way of uh, being actor, being on, on the change, and uh, it, that's and my wish is that philanthropy becomes much more wider and we go to micro-philanthropy, that everybody can be a philanthropist one in his life. I think it's very important. But more than, than philanthropy, I think it's it's all about sharing the culture. And, and so PPPs, even with philanthropies or communities, the ocean is so complex and everything goes to the ocean. Everything comes from the ocean, goes to the ocean. And we need to be all together to share the our own knowledge and to get a richer from the knowledge of, of the neighbor and the whole community. So <laughs> seriously, the ocean, saving the ocean is an adventure that can really bring us together. And, um, and, and to follow, to finish on the zero waste, um, just remember that waste is the resource in nature. In nature, waste doesn't exist. So we need to trigger innovation. Uh, waste uh, recycling value, waste value. I mean, waste will be the beginning of someone else's adventure. Um, waste doesn't exist in nature. It's a resource. Never forget that. It's powerful, isn't it? Waste does not exist in nature. Um, let me come to you, Your Excellency. What message would you like to leave people here today with? Yeah, the important uh, message from me, really, I love you. This is very important, really. To, to love everybody and make everybody happy, and also uh, to do more education program uh, for the kids because they are uh, our future. Uh, really, you know, we are doing with the Ministry of Climate Change and with the, uh, all the municipality in, in Emirat because we are working the whole coast and uh, many things really uh, happen during all our work, you know, especially when we start cleaning the harbors, you know, we saw <clears throat> many kinds of rubbish, we uh, size this and put, you know, the number uh, of, of these uh, things happen. <clears throat> and we write a report, you know, to our, the government uh, to see what's happening and then taking action about that. Uh, also, you know, we have a beautiful uh, island in Abu Dhabi. We have more than 200 uh, islands and stuff. Uh, you know, the dugons, the dolphin, and inshallah, uh, you know, we will complete always, you know, with the ministry to protect the environment, protect the marine environment, and make it happen to everybody can come and see in the nature, because, you know, you can hear and you can see many film. It's not enough. You need to come to the reserve and you, you can see the mangrove, you can see uh, mashallah, in Dubai, I start 2004 with one nest of turtle. Now we have 66 nests because we care about them, mashallah. And this is really help from many, uh, like Nakhil and uh, Dubai municipality and the ministry. Also, we have, uh, you know, the important thing really on our beach, the crabs. We have like 3,000 crabs. Uh, they're cleaning the beach and make the beaches very clean. This is one of the amazing things happen because uh, nobody know much about crabs. Crabs on the beach, they are very important because they're cleaning and always and make the beach very clean. Uh, I think, you know, future is good. We need just to concentrate and work hard because, you know, our grandfather, our grandmothers, they work at very hard environment. You speak about sea, salt, mm -hmm. and desert. And mashallah, they make, you know, the good future for Emirates. And thank you very much for uh, our Sheikh and also for people who come and uh, for uh, Ministry of Climate Change. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Who knew it, ladies and gentlemen? The crabs are the busiest creatures on the beach. Yeah. They are protecting our waters. Yeah. Um, shukran jazilan, merci énormément. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in thanking my distinguished guests. <laughs>